come and abide in me. Holy Spirit, come and abide in me. Holy Spirit, come and abide in me. You are my comforter, my healer for you. Spirit 
has come upon you, and you shall be witnesses, witnesses both in what? Judea, yes, Samaria, and uh -huh. in other parts of the world. Yes. That's why, man. The disciples walked with Jesus uh -huh. for three years. Yeah, break it down, break it down, break it down. They couldn't move forward to witness. Mm -hmm. They couldn't lay hands on the sick. Yeah, man. They could not prophesy. Nothing, man. Nothing. They were not. They were just there, following as a follower of Christ, uh -huh. and they watched all his miracles. Mm -hmm. But when he rose from the grave, yeah. right this now, Acts one. You can just read the whole of the book of Acts one because I lost some time. Um. He, uh, he, he made appearances for 40 days. Yes. Yes. Most people say that when Jesus rose from the grave, he just went to heaven. No, he did not just automatically went to heaven. Yes. He made appearances uh, to prove to the world that whatever he said yes. that he would do, that's exactly what he did. Look at your neighbor say, neighbor, yeah. whatever God said, yeah. he will do in your life. That's exactly what he's going to do. Yeah. Shout hallelujah. 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 Write this down. In John 2.19, there were debates as to if Jesus was the Messiah. And he told them, he said, I want if you just Immediately, he, first of all, in John 2, he turned one and he don't want. Rather than. After that, uh, he went to the temple and he began to uh, uh, turn the table upside down. Those who were selling and doing merchandise in the temple. Going somewhere. And he said, destroy this temple in three days. I will rebuild it. So, and we have seen that, so all of those convincing proof in Matthew chapter 16, 21, Jesus went to Jerusalem and he also repeated, he said, I want you all to know that he was going to be killed, he was going to, he will go to Jerusalem and he will be killed and he will be buried and on the third day he will rise. So, he has to stay behind. My prayer tonight is that as much as we are serving God, I'm feeling this in my spirit. Yeah. I said, Lord, don't allow me to have gray hair. Whatever you have to do, whatever you told me, I'm passionate about this right now. Whatever God has told me he will do in my life, don't allow me to be, allow my eyes to be, to, to be so dim. Or my bones, you know, can't even stand before you do what you say you will do. I told God, I said, tonight, look at everyone say, tonight, prove yourself. I'm sensing the miraculous tonight. Because when you are dealing with the Holy Spirit, as a man and started that, we should expect the miraculous tonight. Look at the say, the miraculous. Something unusual. Yeah. Something unusual. Don't come in here and look for the usual. Look for the unusual. That ear is going to pop up tonight. That eye that you're wearing, those prescription glasses, you're going to remove them tonight. You're going to be able to see tonight. Shout hallelujah. Every migraine headache is walking out of this place tonight. Every sorrow is coming out of this place tonight. Anything that ever tried to stop you because we're dealing with the Holy Ghost tonight, you're coming out of it. Look at the slap someone say, neighbor, I'm coming out tonight. Look at the neighbor say, yeah, 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 yeah. Don't bother me tonight. I got to preach. Look at the preacher say, preach. So, so Jesus had to make, he made convincing proof. Uh -huh. He stayed behind for 40 days. He had to people like Saphas, Saf, 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 Peter, James, and 
about 500 people and much more. Then, while he was still in Jerusalem, uh, he told the disciples, as one is, he said, I want you to remain in Jerusalem. In other words, after 40 days, he has spent 40 days. And before his ascension to heaven, mm -hmm. he gave this command to the apostles, mm -hmm. 120 of them. He said, stay in the upper room. Mm -hmm. He said, stay there. Don't go witness. Don't go do anything because right now, you don't have that power to do it. So he made that promise. So while he ascended into heaven, Within the region of 10 days, Pentecost, the power of the Holy Ghost came upon the apostles. Mm -hmm. So I want you to take note of that, that you cannot do much without the power of the Holy Ghost. That's right. Amen. So we want to tap into that power tonight. The electrical current, look at number say electrical current of the Holy Ghost. Proverbs 2027. 20, Proverbs 2027. 20, the Holy Ghost. It says the spirit of, of a man is the is the candle light or is the lamp of the Lord. And is searching all his innermost belly or parts. When you are filled with the Holy Ghost. When the Holy Spirit comes upon you, He stays in your heart. And, and He lights up everything about you, the innermost part of you. Let me back up a little bit to tell you. When you get born again, write this down. Your, your soul is not saved. I will explain. Your spirit is saved, your spirit is transformed, but your soul is not saved. Now you will ask me, what is the soul? What is our soul? Man is divided into three parts. You have the body, you have the soul, and you have the spirit. Now, what is soul? The soul has three parts. Then when I explain this, then you will understand. The soul has the mind, the will, and the emotions. Why is it that we have, we've been born again for 20 years, but we still have a problem with our emotions? That's why I say your soul, and I know it's not the, it's not a popular teaching, but I, I, I you know, I, but I'll, I'll give you, I'll give you the correct interpretation. Uh, we still, we, we, we still, apostle, we still have a will. Mm -hmm. We still have a problem. We still do what we want to do. Mm -hmm. But we've been in church for 20 years. <laughs> so if our soul is saved, so, you know, why? We still have a, the mind of our own. Yeah. That's why the soul is not saved. In other words, we still have struggle with our soul. Yes. Yeah. So, but when the Holy Spirit comes upon us, He stays in our heart and He begins to act as a light. He goes and He illuminates. He, illum he, said he, becomes, he becomes a candle light that searches our heart. To make sure that whatever we are asking God for is according to His will. Amen. The power that generates from the Holy Spirit. The word power in the Greek is dunamis, rather than dunamis, 
means miraculous power. Greek word. Potential or abilities. Thank you, Lord. Power is an entity or individual individual's ability to control or direct others. Yeah. While authority, exousia in the Greek means power to do something given by conferred, conferred or conferred upon or derived from a higher authority. In other words, the husband gives uh, the instructions, has the power in the house. Then the wife gives the what? The influence, the authority. There are, let me just give this to you. There are 12, there are 12 spiritual powers. Write this down. In other words, when you, when the Holy Spirit is living inside of you, these are some of the things that, uh, uh, the, the, what generates from the Holy Spirit living inside. Write this down. Number one is wisdom. The Holy Spirit, the Bible says that if you, if you, I have, if you need wisdom, ask and he will generously give you. Amen. But God write this down. God does not give you, the Holy Spirit doesn't give you wisdom so you can easily be able to manipulate your situation and get out of it so quickly. Amen. The Holy Spirit allows you to have wisdom so that, so that, when, so that you can learn from your situation. Amen. So when you get out of it, you can learn something. Yeah, thank you. Wisdom, write this down. Number two, love. The Holy Spirit, when he's, when he's on you, like Pastor Manali, he, he, he put in you the spirit to love people. Yeah, yeah. Like, I mean, people ask me, how, how do you love people? I just love people unconditionally. I mean, I can't help myself. <laughs> when I was growing up, you know, people would just, you know, I, you know I, no matter how you hit me, I will first of all, I will immediately run back to you and, and find out if you have food so I can eat food. <laughs> I never have any problem about forgiveness and all of that. No, all of that is not a part of my issue. Amen. Oh, Rebel Tender. I just let go quickly. It, it never stays in my heart. I guess that's why God uses me. Amen. Love. Then number three is strength. The Holy Spirit will give you strength. That is that. He will give you what? Strength. Mm -hmm. Supernatural power. Mm -hmm. So when you are in difficulty, he comes in and he helps you out. So when you speak something, he puts a virtue in you. Yes. And that virtue will enable you to say something. Like last night, I, I didn't kill that, that demon. The Holy Spirit went ahead of me and killed Yes. Strength, supernatural strength. Yes. Another one, faith. Mm -hmm. The Holy Spirit will give you faith to believe God for the impossible. Mm -hmm. Doctor has said something, and uh, you know things are going different directions. But you speak what you believe that God is going to do in your life. Mm -hmm. Don't be afraid to speak faith. Amen. Shout hallelujah. hallelujah. Imagination. Imagination is almost like hope. You know, have you ever sit in your house and imagine one day God will make you a multi-millionaire? Yeah. And you look at your old rugged card or your drive and say, Lord, you know, I'm seriously believing God one day. God is going to give me a Rolls Royce. I say that in this house. Don't look at yourself like you know where you are now. You might be walking in water burger, but that is not what God is saying. God is going to transform somebody's life in this house. Amen. Look at the neighbor and say, neighbor, Amen. God is going to transform somebody. This is a miracle service. Shout hallelujah. Hallelujah. with the Holy Ghost tonight. Order. 
The Holy Spirit wants us to follow his order, his guidelines. He wants us to follow what he says. Another one is understanding. The Holy Spirit will give you the understanding. He is the one that searches the heart. He searches the mind and the heart. So he knows exactly what, what our thinking is. He knows, he knows our pains. He knows what we are going through. So he, he takes our, our petition. He takes it to God. And God looks at like, look, looks at like what we are what, what we're asking for. And, and the Holy Spirit has to make sure it's according to His will. Yes. I told them last time I said there was a time I was asking God to make me a multi-millionaire. And I, you know, I just wanted to have money so I can just be known, I can be everywhere all over the world, all over the place. It was the right motive. And, and, and I said, Holy Spirit, you got to go to God, go tell him. And I want you to make me a multi-millionaire. I never told God that. <laughs> or whatever you are asking God for. And, uh, and I thank God to him that he didn't give me multi-millionaire. Because if he had done that at that time, I won't, I won't be standing in this platform. By now, I won't be in Spain. <laughs> Obeying some limousines, some rock, uh, you know, uh, on top of the, on top of the mountain somewhere. Not poor. Shout hallelujah. hallelujah. A will, because our will is always being interrupted. So when we have the Holy Spirit, so uh, the Holy Spirit will help us to rearrange what our thinking is and make sure that what we are thinking and what we are asking for is according to the will of God. Yeah. I'm talking tonight about how to, um, how to tap into the generating power of the Holy Spirit. Yeah. There is nothing we can do in life so smoothly without the power of the Holy Spirit. Yeah. Tonight, I'm going to be praying for you to receive that power tonight. Yeah, yeah. And if you're sick in your body, we're going to pray for you tonight. Yeah. We're going to believe God tonight for you yeah. totally. Yeah. That every circumstance, every trouble, anything yeah. that has been in your life yeah. that won't go away has to go away tonight. Yeah. Yeah. Shout hallelujah. hallelujah. Shout hallelujah. 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 Understanding. The Holy Spirit once he lives in you, he gives you understanding. He gives you will. Then he gives you power. Write that down. Then, because of that, he gives you a zeal. Have you ever you know, all of a sudden he just gives you a zeal, a desire just to keep, people are wondering that. Where did he, where the, did he or she get this zeal? When did, when did it, so you just keep moving. You are not idle. Then another word is release. He gives you the power to speak, to declare, to decree, and to prophesy. Amen. Then, of course, life itself. Thank you, Lord. In Luke chapter, in Luke chapter 9, 1 and 2, because of time, during Jesus' ministry, this is what he did. And he called the twelve together and gave them power and authority over all demons and to cure all manner of diseases. Sicknesses and diseases don't have power over you. Trials and tribulations don't have the power to, to destroy you. We have power over all of that. So Jesus knew that the disciples cannot be effective in their ministry until he gave them power and authority. Amen. Verse 2. When he gave them power and authority to do what? And he sent them out to proclaim the kingdom of God and to heal. God wants to empower you tonight 
not just to make you become anointed or to have the gifts, but he, he wants to give you the power and authority tonight so we can go out and witness yeah. and win souls to the kingdom of God. Shout hallelujah. hallelujah. In Luke 10 and 1 through 3, because of time, Jesus appointed 72 others and sent them out to go and witness, to go and spread the gospel. We cannot do this if we are not sent. Look at the neighbor say, if you are not sent. Trying to rush this. Mark 16, 17. When Jesus rose from the grave, He gave this command. Mark 16, 17. He says, Signs shall follow them that believe. In my name. What is a sign? Write this down. A sign is a confirmation that God calls you. A sign reminds the enemy that this one is called don't mess with him. This woman is called. Don't touch her. Look at the neighbor and say, neighbor, you are called. The enemy can't mess with you. He said, this sign shall follow them that believe in his name. You know, um, the name of Jesus Christ is so powerful. I'm going to give me that five minutes. The name of Jesus Christ is so powerful. Because it is in that name, every knee bowed to that name. Yeah, yeah. Every tongue confesses that Jesus Christ is Lord. In other words, whatever you are going through right now, the name of Jesus Christ is higher. Yeah. You are sick. The name of Christ is higher than the epilepsy, yeah. than the high blood pressure, yeah. than the low blood pressure. Yeah. It's higher than the troubles that you are in. So every knee is going to bow. Every situation that you are in now must bow to the power of the Holy Ghost. This sign shall follow them that believe. Everywhere we go, we don't run after signs. Signs follow us. Amen. Not that what signs, wonders, and miracles yes. follow us. Yes. We don't have to look for it. It is there because we are called. Amen. First Peter 2 now says, you are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a people who are called out of darkness. Into God's marvelous light. Look at them and say, That's who you are. 2 Chronicles 7 14. If my people which are called by my name shall humble themselves and pray and turn away from their wicked ways, from this as you will hear their voice from heaven and he will forgive you in your sins and heal your land. Signs shall follow them that believe. Number one, one of the signs that we carry is that we, will, we have the capability of casting out devils. Amen. When you tap into that generating power of the Holy Ghost, yeah. the first thing it gives you access to is to cast out devils. Yes. We go to Africa, we go to, I don't want to keep talking about that, but we go to different places, and, and they're looking at us, that like, these people just come, we're going to wipe them out. No, you can't wipe me out. Amen. <laughs> Oh, no. Look at the neighbor saying, the devil can't wipe me out. There are so many times we send some of them to me. And they, they hear that. They, they say, oh, this man, <laughs> you have sent me back to them. The last time I was there, I hardly, I, I, was, I managed to escape. <laughs> so I'm not going back there. I'm telling you. 
Some of you don't know how powerful you are. Amen. The devil is very scared. He's scared of you. Because so many times they have tried to get rid of you and they met with great resistance. I'm telling you, are you aware that you know, if people, if people were able to set a trap, every time they set a trap, that's how they got you. You think you will be here? Uh -huh. <laughs> Many have tried in you many times and they couldn't do it. So the, the only thing they can do is to try to avoid you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. There you go. The Holy Spirit, I'm telling the truth. Yeah. So we have the power to cast out what? Devil. Yes. And then the next thing that we have is the power to lay hands on the sick. And the sick recovers. Don't stop laying hands on sick people. Don't feel like, oh, I don't, I don't think I, I can do it. Why, why can't you do it? Philippians 4, 13. We can do all things. And, 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 and that, scripture, that scripture is for you because we have the Holy Ghost. Yeah. When you have the Holy Ghost, then you can do all Amen. through Christ that strengthens you. Amen. John, First John 4, 4 says, Greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. The Holy Spirit, Jesus Christ lives in us. Yes, sir. The Holy Spirit lives in us. So we have two great entities and God himself lives with us. Lives in us. Mm -hmm. I believe it's 1 John 4.12. Quickly go there. Let me show you something. So people say, well, God don't live inside of me. Yes, he does. He created you and I in his image. We carry the image of God. That's why the devil is always mad at you and I. He's mad at you because every time he looks at you, he sees God's image. And he's mad. You know, most people say, well, well, I don't know why good things happen to bad, uh, bad things happen to good people. That's not true. Yeah. I stand to correct it. People say, well, you know, I don't, I don't know why bad things always happen to good people. That's not true. The devil don't care who you are. <laughs> he go after good people and he go after bad people. Remember that? <laughs> he go after anybody. If you allow him. Mm -hmm. So what he's made at, Papa, is that he's made at us because we carry the image of God. Mm -hmm. That's what he couldn't stop mm -hmm. in the garden. Mm -hmm. He was able to run Adam and Eve out, but he couldn't run out the image of God that God yeah. created us. Remember that? Remember that? Cast out demons. Mm -hmm. Lay hands on the sea. Um, when you eat deadly poison, it will not hurt you. Yes. And we shall speak in new what? Tongues. Woo! That new tongue, rather than, that new tongue is, is, is one of the major evidence of the baptism of the Holy Spirit. The tongue it's an expression of the language of heaven. Woo! The only two people that understand that language is the Holy Spirit, of course, Jesus too, but the Holy Spirit and God. Mm -hmm. That tongue that is the language with which the Holy Spirit communicates with God. Mm -hmm. So when you start, when, when the Holy Spirit change your language, and then you go when he changes your language, thank you, Lord Holy Ghost. So when he changes your language uh, and you start praying, for instance, in the spirit, mm -hmm. so um, he so from that point on, the Holy Spirit takes over your strength. Yeah. He takes the prayer over. Yeah. Because you do not know what you are saying. But the Holy Spirit is the one who is who is interceding for you yeah, from that point on. Thank you, Jesus. Yeah. Remember that. Amen. So, and, and the good news is that because you have allowed the Holy Spirit to take over your tongue, 
So he is making sure that every word he is speaking out from you is always in accordance with the will of God. Amen. So the Holy Spirit, so the power that generates from the Holy Spirit. So when you have Him in your life, yes. you are very secure. Amen. No matter what, what comes across your way, yes. the Holy Spirit will go ahead of you and help you fight your fight. Amen. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, he will help me fight my fight. This is, this is the last thing I, 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 I want to just leave with you. Thank you, Lord Holy Ghost. Thank you, Jesus. In Acts 19.5, Paul came to the certain people of Ephesus and meant that 12 of them never heard about the Holy Ghost. So in verse 5, on, so when he prayed for them, on hearing this, they were baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Verse 6, when Paul laid hands on them, they received the power of the Holy Ghost and they spoke in tongues and they prophesied. In 2 Timothy 1.6, Paul told Timothy, he said, I want you to remember that you must always stir up the gift that is in you. I want you to remember to constantly stir up the gift that is in you when I lay hands on you. So every time you are feeling like you know, things are you know, you know, losing faith, Put your right hand on your forehead and prophesy over yourself. Amen. Amen. And speak that fire back to yourself. Amen. Look at the neighbor and say, fire. fire! In 2 Kings chapter 2, Papa, 11 through 14, it says, Elisha had to tap into the double into the anointing of Elijah. Elisha had, was not a prophet. Until when they crossed the river Jordan to the other side, and Elijah told, asked Elijah, he said, What can I do for you? This is a night of importation. Amen. He said, What can I do for you? He said, I want the double portion of what you have. Amen. Elijah said, You have asked for a hard thing. Yeah. But if you see me being taken in by a wild way to heaven, I want you to grab what you can grab. Look at the neighbor say, tonight, I'm here to grab. I'm here to take what I can take tonight. Tired of being in one place. I'm too tired of being in one place. I want to go move forward tonight. Look at the say, move forward tonight. After tonight, you will keep your mouth shut and, and just go lay down and sleep like a baby when you see your fan blowing uh, uh, some flower in your house. <laughs> I was in Nigeria years ago. I know they're watching me right now. We're coming, so I'm not scared. I heard this owl. Woo, 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 woo. Some of you don't know what that means. It's some witch. In Africa. Yeah. Woo, woo. And I'm laying down almost like 3 o'clock in the morning. And, and, uh, and you know, upstairs laying down. And all of a sudden, woo, woo. And I know, I know that voice. And I know that was the devil. Mm -hmm. So I just, I just got up and I, I opened my slide window. I said, I, in my language, I said, you know what? <laughs> Let me face this way. <laughs> I said, you know what? I know who you are. I know your name. And I know the whole place is quiet. Nobody, this is 3 o'clock in the morning. Everybody is asleep. I say, I know who you are, and I know your name, and I know your address. If I hear you, the problem that we are having is that we are scared. We don't know how to fight back, how to intimidate the enemy. 
I said, if I hear you make another noise, I will get up at 6 o'clock in the morning, I will come and knock on your door, and I will drag you out of your house. And I will drag you to the city gate, and I will, I will hand you over to the elders. All right. You know that when I said that from that date until I left my hometown, there was no more crowd anyhow. What? Because all they do is they try to they want to they try to intimidate us by a little try again and they don't fall for it. If you stand up and resist the enemy, you will see you will flee away. All the days I was there, there was no more crime. I believe he or she went back and told them, say, this man is here. <laughs> I'm telling you the truth. Because we have, because we have this dominion power. We have this, we have this Holy Spirit yeah. that has energized me to be able to do it. Amen. Amen. Elijah received the double portion of the anointing from Elijah. Ah, Exodus 18, 21. Moses was so busy, saturated with so many responsibilities. In fact, I in object to. He said, Moses, you, you will wear yourself out if you had to run around for two million people. He said, then God told him, he said, I want you to appoint 70 elders. Put your spirit in their spirit. Right. <laughs> God didn't tell Moses, okay, let me come and put my spirit. Because God already placed his own spirit upon Moses. He said, now, you put your spirit upon these, these leaders. So you can split them so the administrative work and ministry can be effective. Yeah. I felt something like that tonight. As to one of one, two, three, four, it was on that Pentecostal Sunday. Yeah. And please, never you, never you call yourself uh, uh, Pentecostal. People will ask you, uh, what's your denomination? Oh, I'm Pentecostal. No, you're not Pentecostal. No, I think. You are not Pentecostal because the word Pentecost is a Jewish feast. Celebrated 50 days after Passover. So every time you're telling people I'm Pentecostal, all you're saying is that I'm Jewish. Peace. <laughs> Remember that? You can say full gospel. Yeah. You know, whatever else you can say. But it was on that faithful night, mm -hmm. and the power of the Holy Ghost came upon the apostles, and they began to do things they've never done before. Mm -hmm. So, that's how you tap into the generating power. Amen. By number one, accepting Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior of your life. Then you ask for that, that infilling of the Holy Ghost. Somebody lay hands on so many people and they receive this anointing. Lift your hands up. People started getting healed. Demons cast out. People's lives start changing. People became bold enough to step out and knock on doors. Holy Spirit. 